This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Today's episode is a good one. I've got Catherine Coley on the show. Catherine is the CEO of Binance America. Before we get started, I want to let you know that we have a sponsor. Yes, this episode is brought to you by Nexo, the only provider offering instant crypto credit lines, which let you use digital assets as collateral to get cash in more than 45 different fiat currencies and stable coins. In order to secure a loan with Nexo, you must first deposit collateral that will be used as a security deposit to repay the loan if you fail to do so. The cryptocurrencies currently available to serve as collateral are Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, the Nexo token, Binance Coin, Stellar and EOS. And new collateral options are being added all the time. Nexo also offers the ability to earn 8% daily compounding interest on your digital assets, euros, US dollars and great British pounds. Now this is up to 130x what the traditional banks offer. And what's more, interest is paid out daily and you can add or withdraw funds at any time. Nexo launched in 2018 and since then the company has established itself as the world's leading crypto lending service. So far they have processed more than 1.5 billion for more than 550,000 users on their platform. And the company has 100 million in insurance on all custodial assets provided by the leading audited custodian Bitco. So don't worry, your assets are safe when using Nexo. Get started at nexo.io. My guest today is Catherine Coley. Catherine is the CEO of Binance America or Binance US. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you so much. I'm excited. I'm excited too. And well, I'll tell you what, Catherine, it is certainly an exciting time of the year. It's an interesting time to be alive on planet Earth at the start of 2020, right? We're only into the third month of the new decade. And this year, this decade is off with a bit of a hiss and a roar. And, you know, <laughs> That's suddenly, exactly the noises I heard when 2020 started. So, <laughs> you know, hashtag the virus is spreading. And obviously there are layers and multiple meanings to that particular hashtag. Oh, yes. Look, I, I want to talk about your background and I want to talk about Binance America. But just before we do that, you know, top line thoughts from a macro perspective, from the virus perspective, you know, interesting times, right? Absolutely interesting times. I mean, I, I really hate when we have to discuss speculation or, or even monetizing events like this that are involving real people's lives. So I try and stay my distance, but you can't help but notice the macro knock on effects that we're going to be witnessing. And I've spent my whole life uh, studying these these flows, these changes. I mean, truly understanding how money moves is also a way of us understanding how people move and unfortunately how viruses spread. So I find it a fascinating world. My mother was a nurse as well. So I, uh, I, I take keen interest when it comes to things like this. Yes, you know, as you mentioned it yourself, as finance people or money people, and especially even as crypto people, you know, we understand probability, we understand risk, we understand exponential growth. Ooh, and, yeah. you know, crypto Twitter has its um, ups and downs, shall we say, but it has felt like we've been, you know, two to four weeks ahead of the mainstream media narrative on this thing. Or possibly two to four weeks over panicking on this thing. You know, there's a there's a case of are we were we pre prepared and too prepared and therefore made it a bigger deal than it should be, or is this just a step in the right direction ahead of things? So I, I think the the number one thing we have to remember is even if you're on crypto Twitter, please wash your hands. <laughs> that is exactly right. And yeah, again, you're you're right. You know, there are there are two sides to this, and we're just going to have to see this play out. Let's rewind a bit. Let's start from the beginning. So you know, you do have a strong background in finance. Why don't you just 
lay some of that out for us? You're in foreign exchange trading, I think, but how, how did you get into finance originally? Were you always a, a numbers nerd? Yeah, I was uh, always, always one that loved the uh, numbers counting. I, I enjoyed, you know, selling lemonade and getting a nickel out of it and getting two more nickels out of it. But no, I actually want to break down that word finance because it's rather intimidating. And uh, oftentimes when people think finance, they're going immediately to the, you know, midtown vests and uh, penny loafers and walking around and, you know, that, that type of era. And for me, the beauty of it was I found something inside of a career that would let me be my best self. So realizing that out there, there was this thing called markets and sales and trading, and it just involved connecting the dots between things, reading up on the news, and then being able to make a, a fair risk assessment, and then know if you were right or wrong and cut your losses uh, without <laughs> without an ego. Uh, that to me was fascinating. So I, I took on uh, you know the FX world being the fastest moving market out there, the most liquid, the most kind of cowboy uh, at the era when I was looking for a career. And I put myself in it and just dove fully into it, moving out to Hong Kong to be on a trading floor out there. And it was fascinating. And I was just so excited that I'd finally found something that, that fit my energy level, my attention to, to understanding you know, the big picture of the world and connecting it with people. So I, I oftentimes have to break that down because most people, when they think of a big job or a career in finance, they don't realize how interesting that actually becomes. Um, so that was that was the world. I definitely wasn't in the investment banker. Um, my long term attention span wasn't you know wasn't good enough for that. So I had to focus on the being able to think quickly, being able to make decisions quickly, and then and being able to assess those decisions I made. Um, and that's really what drove me to markets. So I, uh, I took that on, found it fascinating, learned everything I could about Asia, Asian markets, um, the idiosyncratic you know the nuance of each of these countries affects how money moves in and out of them. So that to me was fascinating. Uh, and then with the fortune of Morgan Stanley was able to move to London to see kind of how the big boys did it. Um, the, the highest volume, highest, uh, you know, largest markets out there from financial perspectives were based in London. Um, and that's really because the time zones overlap there so well. So um, I, you know, got a full eye view on that, whether it was the Scottish referendum or whether it was the um, Swiss peg breaking. I was on the floor during all of that that chaos, or I say chaos with a lowercase c because the real chaos happened when I jumped over into crypto and was able to see volatility that we've never dreamed of. Yes, indeed. And so I guess speaking of volatility and, you know, you spent some time as the head of institutional liquidity on the XRP markets team at Ripple. And um, yeah, was that, that was 2017, which was yeah, obviously was a, so <laughs> a volatile that year, That was 2017, right? right. I, uh, I joined that summer and right after they had had a little bit of a, a bull run and then it came off right when I joined and I was like, oh, perfect. Okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm in good timings. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, there's a feature on their website back in the day where it showed you where you could buy XRP. And the one button that you clicked sent an email directly to me. And I was the email recipient for the 2017 rally. And my goodness, the, the global spread and the, the volume of emails I got and the, the pace at which I had to reply to them was uh, unworldly. <laughs> And, uh, well, that, yeah, that uh, I think that's that when I truly, intense. that's when I truly recognized a, well, I found myself a great job, uh, but B, this is a global event that's occurring. This is the attention that is happening here is, you know, transcending anything we've seen before. You do not need to have millions in the bank to be able to partake. You do not need to be in a specific geography to partake. You do not need to be, uh, you know, sophisticated investors to partake. That was just the the realization that crypto could really transcend all of this, lower the barriers to entry, and we were the ones that had to steward the market um, in the best way. So I, I found it insanely insightful and almost feel like my eyes have never been the same since seeing the inbox for those three weeks of uh, you know the rally up, uh, or maybe it was in three days, but I think my, my top... Um, top number of emails like in a six hour span with something like 17,000. Um, so. Wow, that is 
insane. But they, uh, they had obviously. hired just the right girl for that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go then from this crazy 2017 bull run and XRP was a big part of that? Binance was obviously really just founded about halfway through 2017, I think. And Binance by the, I guess, the start of 2018 was probably the leading crypto exchange in terms of certainly retail volume. And the Binance story is a little bit of a complex one, but of course the short, short version is, as I said, Binance really became, uh, you know, the leading retail exchange very, very quickly. Of course, uh, you know, Binance's home jurisdiction was a little bit of a mystery and or as CZ likes to say, you know, Binance is decentralized and, and that's great, uh, which of course you can get away with in some parts of the world more than others. So if you, if you pick up the story, Obviously, Binance, they wanted to get into America. But yeah, where did, how did you cross paths with the Binance team? And, and what was the thinking behind setting up yeah, Binance in the US? And, and where do you intersect with that? Yeah, it was impossible to avoid their origin and rate of growth. Uh, I remember when they popped up on the scene and we were at the time looking for you know, what are the ways where you can get XRP into other digital assets or other, you know, other trading pairs or other fiat, you know, off ramps. And this behemoth that was, you know, lowercase b turned into a capital B uh, of Binance uh, just took off. And you just saw them execute at a, at a pace that was on par with how the market was growing. And they offered, they started offering things that people really wanted, and they genuinely had this ear to the market to deliver what it was that this trading, you know, budding trading society really needed. And and so I, I always was really aware that uh, the infrastructure was what was going to let us all get on this boat, um, or you could call it a rocket ship. But um, it was really the infrastructure had to be good enough to let people in in order for us to all partake in it. And that was one of the things that Binance just executed, to my opinion, flawlessly. Um, you know, there there's clearly a development cycle in all starting companies, and I think one of the things they've done best is stay stay nimble when it comes to growing. And so this, you know, the concept of being decentralized actually does work and is fascinating. Um, and it, it lets you move at a pace. It lets you operate in a way that you can really get things done and work with the re best people uh, rather than have the complexity of, you know, Karen's got a two hour commute and, you know, we've got to wait for everybody to go home. The roads will be congested. I mean, you think about all the burdens that people have with office life and CZ's managed a way to make people be their best selves when they come to work. Very nicely said. Well, so I've heard you tell the story of you met the... Ah, uh, yes, but, but but how did it all get started, right? So I, I did, um, I, there was a, the, it's a, you know, it's a really fun story and I have to, the universe is a wonderful thing and I, I definitely believe in, in that. And uh, sure enough, one of my Morgan Stanley karaoke partners was um, a guy named Justin Chow, who is running uh, Cumberland's efforts uh, in crypto. And I pinged him and I was like, hey, karaoke buddy, like, what do I got to do to get on this uh, Cumberland Summit that was this very exclusive group that was going to be headed up in Singapore? And uh, he's like, all right, I'll, you know, I know you're from the old times. We'll, we'll figure out if, you, you know, we can get you in. Maybe you can be a plus one or something, something. And I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. I think this is the right room and XRP needs to at least have a voice in that room. Uh, so I went over, went down to Singapore, uh, fortunately, with his uh, blessing and, uh, found myself on a on a random bus on part of their, their you know the the visit and I sat next to this guy and I was like all right I'm a rather chatty person so I sat down and I said hey you know what do you do why do I need to know you what's uh what's kind of the deal here and he was just kind of taken aback like whoa 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 what are you who are you what are you doing here uh and we ended up playing the name game and in Singapore and he was kind of going like well, how how this girl that grew up in North Carolina and Florida and how's she relevant here in Asia and knows the same people I know and um, he was about to go have a meeting with someone that ended up being a Morgan Stanley intern of mine that now ran Amber Group 
Um, and so it was just a funny overlap and he was actually from Alabama. And uh, so we all kind of connected the dots and said, you know, like, what's the South got to do with Singapore? And, and that kind of brought us into a common bond. Um, that wasn't the only thing that we respected out of each other. And so I, I think that's what, what began this relationship with uh, Binance and myself of just kind of being able to establish who were key players in the market, who were the hustlers, who were the people that were going to get things done and um, how could we get things done in an effective way. And so that's when it kind of, after enough conversations came through, said, do you guys want to get into the United States? If you want to get to the United States, I can help you find someone. And uh, they kind of turned it around and said, like, what about you? And I said, all right, well, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, I was, I was going to help you out, but, uh, I, you know, I'd love this. So uh, absolutely kind of found myself into a, a dream role to be able to build the infrastructure that I desperately wanted to see come to the United States, um, be able to influence the product to be more inclusive, bring in more perspectives that may or may not feel isolated from this market, uh, be able to open doors that may have been closed previously just due to the nature of not knowing who Binance US might become, and, uh, and really just bring crypto into the every street in America. Well, that is a fantastic sounding vision. And so Binance is obviously, you know, a, a blue chip brand, I, I guess you'd say in crypto, but it's very different. It's a very different time. So it's one thing for the original Binance to launch in this crazy bull market of 2017. And, you know, they can obviously, or they did blitz scale very, very quickly. But it's a little bit more challenging, I imagine, in the US at the moment in terms of being able to start a new exchange and establish a trader customer base. Of course, the regulatory environment is much uh, different. You'd have to move just a little bit slower, I imagine. Talk me through that. What's, what's the state of the exchange market in the US? It, it's pretty competitive. Yeah, no one said it'd be easy, but the elements that I've been given, are, are, I'm at a huge privilege right now. I've got a you know global brand that's well recognized. I've got the leading global technology for trading uh, that I can build upon. I've got a, you know a fantastic ear to the ground in terms of the the U.S. market um, and what really needs to be taking place. And we've got call it eight years in advance of regulation that's been mulled over prior to us arriving. So with that comes the, you know, the downside of it being not the first time people are seeing things. So they have more questions, they're more educated, they're more particular about certain elements. The advantages of it are this is not the first time they've heard of someone trying to launch a, an exchange business. So it's not uh, totally foreign to them and, and therefore frightening. They're just more particular about what they want to be having uh, seen and built here in the US. So I, I take it as there's no better time than the present. We're, we're building in real time here. So America needed a, you know, a, a, a push towards making sure that it wasn't falling behind in terms of global innovation. And that's one of the things that I feel so strongly about while we see other groups fleeing the US because of uh, the lack of regulation or the lack of opportunity. Some people still see it as not going to be the the land that's going to make it make sense, but I still see the resources of capital markets in the US are a huge, huge privilege. And the US dollar is still the reserve currency of the world. And, and there is still such a great opportunity here in the US to get it right and to, to get it done well in a way that makes sure that we are not left behind from this global digital economy that's being built right before our eyes. So that's something that I really stand strongly behind and am not going away. Yeah, well, interesting thoughts. And Catherine, you wrote an op-ed for the NASDAQ, I think it was this week, I was reading it yesterday, and mm -hmm. you had some great points in there. And I, th I think, you know, your number one point was really that the United States has traditionally been known as an innovation leader, shall we say. But with crypto, is there a danger that has the US fallen behind or is it, or is it too early to say that? God, it's so early to say that. The race is off to the start, but it's, it's not nearly finished. So I think we, we have to act now in terms of taking it very seriously. We have to recognize that there will be job loss, there will be innovation loss, there will be um, capital flight 
if we do not take it in a manner that allows people to partake in these events and you know freedom of, of financials that that really should be part and parcel to the bitcoin and the crypto movement so i i do not think it's too late when i joined morgan stanley they were celebrating the 75th birthday of um the bank and i was like oh i've really missed <laughs> i've really missed the opportunity on this one and i still had a fantastic uh five years working with that bank and they've they've renovated themselves since in multiple quarters and and you know changed everything into the better so it's still always early we're just going to be evolving uh, do not give up or throw in the towel just yet but definitely pay attention to what's happening around us yeah well i i think that's the right way to, to look at it and i think it's it's not about the us versus asia or versus anywhere else it, it's it's really more about the crypto blockchain and, and bitcoin ecosystem and not even against traditional finance but you know crypto has to kind of band together and and again you, your piece in nasdaq this is a good way of characterizing it you said that while 55 percent of americans own stocks and obviously the stock market is looking a little bit toppy you know only six percent of americans own bitcoin and i'm sure that's roughly uh the same around the world so you know, those numbers alone sort of tell you where the opportunity is and where the growth can come from. But again, you know, the challenges, uh, the challenges aren't unique to the US or, or to anywhere in the world. The challenges are unique to crypto. It's about education and, and you know, UI, UX and, and really just letting people know what crypto is all about, right? And so much changing, changing the, the status quo, the, the the common norm. We've never thought that you could trade markets after hours. You know, the, the stock market closes, you can't put a trade in. Um, we do a lot of activities on Binance US after hours uh, just to prove that point. So we do AMAs, uh, you know, different different events. We launch uh, different products, call it 6 p.m. or 9 p.m. at night, um, just to show that crypto does not have, uh, you know, hourly rules that it has to follow. It is something that you can do when it's convenient for you all the time or just in a certain amount of time. But that to me was a huge freedom. It meant that I could have a day job and not worry about being left behind financially. Um, I could, you know, go home at the end of the day or on a whether I'm sitting in an Uber, wherever I am, I don't have to be in front of the bank teller. I don't have to, you know, wait for my stockbroker to be in the office. Um, and that to me was just a huge freedom that would allow me to run the course of my life in a way of confidence. Absolutely. And look, I, I, I know that you probably have a multiple different, let's say, market segments, but how would you characterize Binance America or Binance US? What's your offering or is there, where do you see yourself in the market? So for example, obviously, you know, Coinbase, uh, a massive in the US. And then, you know, we've seen over the last 12 months, the rise of Square and, and the Cash App, right? In terms mm -hmm. of, you know, inflows into Bitcoin. So in that respect, where, where does Binance fit? Are you for retail traders, institutional traders, definitely traders? Yeah, Binance definitely started out being kind of a perfect mix for what I call the ambitious trader. So it was someone that was familiar with markets, wanted to, wanted to see that visual display of charts, wanted to understand order depth, wanted to, to you know, be able to see, leave orders in the market. Um, and that is definitely a more advanced trader than what you'd see on someone that would just be clicking uh, to buy, assuming they didn't understand how market structure worked or that for every buyer there was a seller. Um, they just thought, oh, I, you know, I'm accumulating something and I cl click this button and it happens. Uh, and so we've taken kind of a hybrid approach here in the U.S., realizing that there is not one segment of, of user of crypto. Um, and we cannot treat people assuming they'll all graduate to that level or they'll all start off at that level. So we have a very series of uh, features that allow people to do just what they want to do. So we have a one-click buy-sell on our website and soon uh, to be coming to our app where you can just click and buy and purchase uh, and convert uh, any of the crypto that you would like in a, in a single click rather than going through and leaving an order. We also have where you have the kind of traditional Binance uh, 
experience where you're going to be leaving orders in the market, whether that's limits, whether, you know, that's market orders at best. Um, and you'll be able to see those kind of go through the order book um, with the charts. The other side of it is we have for our kind of our extreme and experienced traders is our API. Um, and so that experience is, you know, they can plug in, um, be able to trade their strategies that they've got. Um, and it's really, you know, quick and easy for them to get set up on, on Binance US in that respect. So we think of it as kind of this, you'll you'll be able to partake as comfortably as you would like to be, uh, whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, whether you're advanced or whether you have bots and those trade at night, you know, there's a, there's as much of a human element in, in trading on Binance US as you'd like. Um, the other thing that we really do provide is human customer support. Um, so I realize that the only way we're going to get people to understand this is if we do, you know, walk people through uh, the elements that it takes. So whether it's our videos that teach people how to go through our KYC flow, or whether it's sending me a DM on Twitter to ask me, you know, I'm stuck here and I don't know what to do next. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, my team's here to help. And we're, we're really building this to make sure that we can welcome more people and have you know, the most inclusive community in crypto in the US, uh, because it needs to happen. Absolutely. And look, an, another narrative that has uh, arisen over recent times, or the, there's a growing realization now that, you know, crypto, it, it, it's not just about for the holders, it's not just about, you know, stacking Satoshis and putting that aside. It's not even just about trading, you know, now, thanks to uh, exchanges such as Binance and Coinbase as well, you know, you can begin to get involved with staking and the governance of like proof of stake coins. And that has become a lot easier now, right? For the for the less technical people or even institutions that don't necessarily want the the headache of, of doing it themselves. So, you know, that's that's something you guys have been pushing quite hard, right? Yeah, everyone has their story of what makes it click for them to, to recognize what digital assets mean. So we have over 30 coins that you can get into through dollars, um, through debit card, through ACH, through um, payments, through wires. And if your journey takes you through, you know, the smallest altcoins or through the, you know, most liquid Bitcoin, that is up to you. And we're here just to provide a freedom of choice to, to let you realize that you can partake in these markets, how big, how small, uh, you won't be penalized. You'll have, you know, low fees starting off uh, for everybody. Um, at a reasonable level, and the more you trade, the the, the better your rates get, um, and that is just truly part of our, our purpose of not being the the blocker and lower the barriers for people to get this to make sense. So um, we're definitely here to educate, not intimidate, and that's why we cater our product to different types of users. Fantastic. Well, let's go to a very quick break, Catherine. And then when we come back, I want to talk just a little bit about CZ, touch base again on the regulations environment. And then eventually we will finish off with the very famous crypto conversation, Hot Take Ground. Whether you're an enterprise fund manager or a retail trader, buying and selling cryptocurrencies successfully requires price discovery you can rely on. Brave New Coins Liquid Indices provide trusted US dollar prices for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. Featuring end of day or intraday outputs, you can count on the BLX, ELX, and XRPLX for accurate US dollar pricing for smart contract oracles, settlement price discovery, net asset valuation, and performance analysis. Visit bravenewcoin.com to find out more. So Catherine, I just want to uh, yeah, touch base again on what you think is happening in the regulatory environment, because it's sometimes a little bit of a confusing picture, and particularly in the US, because obviously the US is so big, it's so diverse, and the, the rules differ from, from state to state. You know, the Bitcoin ETF, is it on, is it off? That narrative has been going on for a, a long time now. Then we have uh, Hester Pierce and the SEC sort of, you know, waving the flag for for crypto and she's doing a, a great job there, but it sometimes feels like she's a, a lone voice against uh, the, the sort of the grinding, slow machinery of the US regulatory environment. Sort of, You know, those people are called heroes some days. Yes. <laughs> Lone wolves are oftentimes on onto something right. <laughs> For sure. 
Yeah. We, we come at this with such a, an unusual paradox where the U.S. has so many different branches of regulation. So not only are we seeing, uh, whether it's the SEC or the CFTC, or FINRA, uh, you're, really, you're really seeing just such a segmentation of the, of the regulatory uh, environment. So we have to really focus on what's going to help make the most sense for folks. And I, I oftentimes pull it back even farther and say, you know, at what point does regulatory uh, clarity help us when we still may have taxation clarity that it hurts us? So, um, you know, understanding the, the fundamentals, whether we have uh, treating digital assets as property prevents us from doing so many other things with it that you could be able to do should it have been considered a, a currency or, or a commodity and thus regulated by a different entity. So I, I think we're still trying to, to fight over or fit correctly um, on the means of which one, which, which group or should all groups or how, how much overlap we should take on a regulatory side and, and what participants should be the regulated ones. So is it the venues themselves that are offering uh, liquidity? Is it the, uh, the, you know, the tokens and the projects that are spinning up? Um, and I think, you know, the, seeing the great work from Hester came out and she's just improved upon it as well. Um, re really trying to reiterate that there is a hope for these projects to be able to work inside of a, a safety zone or a framework uh, that allows them to, to really grow. If we constantly looked at how flowers were born and said, oh, that's not a flower, like you're right, it takes it a while to bloom. So, so give us a, you know, give us a little bit of a head start in order to get to that point where we can then call something, you know, a mature uh, digital asset and therefore judge it for how it should really look. Um, and that, that to me is something that's just refreshing to see from regulators' eyes, whereas our early days was uh, kind of this fear state of shut it down. Um, I think they either shut it down or, or don't talk about it and therefore the confusion will, will cause them to go insane. Um, so, you know, we are seeing responses and that is a great progress forward. So I'm very excited for where we see Washington step up, uh, where we see the participants inside of the United States work together on, on items. Um, you know, collaboration may not have been popular when Bitcoin started out, but it's, uh, doesn't need to stay that way. So that's where I, that's where I see this, uh, world headed in the right direction. It's definitely in the, headed in the right direction, though. Yeah, I think we are headed in the right direction. And it's just, we never know how, how fast or slow things can happen. You know, we saw just this week, India seemed to have, you know, out of the blue reversed their ban on cryptocurrency trading, which is, you know, potentially a, a very good thing. And I, th I think South Korea have, um, yeah, again, passed some more crypto friendly regulations. So, th you know, exactly. these things can happen I'm, very quickly. Took, took no time once you saw India do it. Um, others do it. And, and I, it just brings the attention to the demand. This isn't something that people are going to be forgetting. This isn't something that's going away. This is written in our IRS forms now. This is guidelines put out by central banks. Um, you know, leaders of the, the free and developing worlds are all very much so focused on uh, creating digital currencies of their own. So I think that's very important for us to recognize that the voices have not been quieted and we're seeing real action take place. Absolutely. Is it true that you spent three days working customer support? Uh, I wish for... it was three days. I'm still going on it. I think I'm 164 days right now. <laughs> because, yeah, that's such a good, I guess it's, it's almost like a founder cliche, but to say that, you know, but as, as you sort of, I thought it's it really was gonna important. Be, I thought it was going to be three. I mean, truly three days, there was no other support. It was just Catherine Coley. Um, and then beyond that, I think I got some help, but not, um, not, I didn't take the foot off the, the pedal or, or then, uh, I'm still very much available to talk to my customers and I probably talk to uh, at least, you know, 15 to 30 a day, um, engaging with them, whether or not it's, uh, you know, features that they don't like, or, uh, maybe they're having trouble with our, with our onboarding process and something's not clicking. Uh, I very much so want to understand where the friction is and, and lessen that, um, as well as know where people are based. I, I, I haven't found people uh, 
be too shy when I ask them where are they based? And, you know, I get an all capital letters like Ohio. <laughs> and that to me just gets me more excited every day to be, be offering this to right now. We only work in 37 States getting our licenses for the remaining 13. And it's a struggle not to be able to operate in the States I've lived and worked and known best. Uh, so I'm meeting and learning new, new communities. And I'm very excited uh, about these pockets of, vibrant crypto fanatics uh or you know diehard binance fans so it's uh it's really rewarding um from my side as as much as equally their frustrations are my own frustrations so i try to get get us both to the other side of course and speaking of diehard binance fans what, what about cz you know what how much do you talk to cz and and what are some of the the perhaps the key lessons or, or is it anything that he's passed on that you've uh, had to really draw on as as binance us starts to take off definitely i mean when you when you step into this space and it is so unknown it's what a privilege to be able to learn from the best and learn from someone that's really taken you know concept to over a billion dollars of a company uh within you know a two-year time frame so i the the items that i cherish in working with cz is just how practical he is and how straightforward he sees things um oftentimes i think image uh, image and uh concept can be blurred when people are trying to evaluate what is the answer people really want and CZ just calls it like it is. If it's difficult for a user, we're not going to do it. If it helps users function, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it now. So I really just take um, you know take such excitement when I when I get to work with him on things where he just sees it so clearly, and uh, we need more of that. Unfortunately, the world gets a little political and confusing, and alter alter motives. CZ just wants to bring freedom of money to everyone. And then it's very straightforward to be aligned on that vision. Fantastic. All right. Well, just before we go to a break, I, I did notice I saw on social media it's International Women's Day on Sunday, Catherine. And look, you know, not to not to wave the diversity flag too high, but you know, you're kind of a rare example of uh, a woman CEO in crypto or or even in tech. I mean, that's sort of it's slowly starting to change. But you know, any any perspectives there that that you're happy to share? Well, first of all, every day is International Women's Day. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Second of all, if we have to pick only one day, I'm I'm okay to celebrate only on one day a year. But uh, no, I uh, I'm super excited. I'm so so inspired by the women that I get to bring in to Binance US, um, whether they're employees of ours or they're um, customers of ours. I've met some awesome people so far. So I met a woman in Chicago, and she was, uh, you know, in um, in the medical sphere, but woke up two hours early for a month just to learn how charting worked in order to trade crypto uh, better. And she is up on our VIP tiering. Uh, she is a diehard trader. And I love that this is something that has given her a liberty beyond her own career. And she's infatuated with it. And so, I, you know, it was great to hear how she's grown a community inside of her Chicago neighborhood and continues to learn. And that's exactly who I like to empower. So uh, there should be no versions of, well, it's hard to get into crypto. I don't see myself in that space. Uh, like I'm just as normal and human as everyone else. I, I wish I had the super God powers that other people in the tech scene seem to have. But, um, you know, I come and run to the office with wet hair and trip over scooters and do silly things. So uh, I think one of the best parts about International Women's Day is we're all humans. We just happen to have the superpower of being a woman. Yeah, that's really nicely said. And I think you're, you're exactly right. We are all just humans with our own unique, uh, messy blend of biases and quirky habits and whatnot. It's kind of weird that we even have to have things like International Women's Day. It almost <laughs> sounds archaic, right? I mean, if you're not going to celebrate how awesome women are, then at least give us one day. But uh, <laughs> there's a, you know, it's no easy... Um, no easy step trying to pull this off as anyone. Um, and I think being alone in the space leading the charge has never caused me to, to shy away from things. I've put myself in male dominated industries since I tried out for the golf team as a, you know, 85 pound freshman girl. 
And um, so I, to me, it's just a land of opportunity for us to, to be able to use our best skills and, and broaden the pie to which the world can participate in. Fantastic. All right, well, let's go to another very quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds to finish off with the Crypto Conversation Hot Take Round. Hey there, you Crypto Conversation fans. My name is Brian Krogsgaard, and in combination with Josh Olsiewicz, we record LedgerCast, a weekly podcast all about cryptocurrency trading. It's a little different than what Andy's got going on here with the Crypto Conversation podcast, where he's interviewing folks, and we think that you would enjoy it if you like this. It's also brought to you in partnership with Brave New Coin, and I hope to see you soon. Just go to ledgerstatus.com to check it out or search for it on your favorite podcast player. Hot take. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we are back, and I'm with Catherine Coley. Catherine is the CEO of Binance US. Catherine, I'd like to finish each Crypto Conversation podcast with a quick round of a rapid-fire crypto hot takes. Are you up for it? Hot takes. I am. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I just want your hot takes, your hot fire. Take your best shot. Here we go. Where do you sit on the Bitcoin and maximalist to multi-coin opportunist spectrum? Darth Vader. Well, that is an abstract and acceptable answer. We'll take it. All right, Catherine, what would you say is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? More people will be in it next year. I think that is safe to bet on. We would hope so. All right, I ask every guest this question, Catherine, and we're getting closer. Who wins the American presidential election 2020? That's this year. Someone over the age of 70. <laughs> Yeah, and the, see, the weird thing about that is you will have seen the COVID-19 coronavirus. It's a table that's going around on Twitter, which cheerfully points out the death rates for the different age brackets. And it's not affecting children. Not affecting children, but it is affecting people over the age of 70 and up. And, you know, should, should these presidential candidates who are 70 plus, can they still go out in public and just shake hands and kiss babies and stuff like that? They're going to have to learn how to campaign through Twitter. I don't, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not sure they should be uh, putting themselves in those giant arenas. I know we're uh, trying to limit gatherings just for sake of, I can wash my hands, but I can't be sure everyone else does. That's right. It's going to be a highly charged political campaign, I think. But hey, let's keep it moving. Also happening this year, it's happening before the election, it's happening in May, the Bitcoin halving. Put you on the spot, Catherine. Is this priced in? Does it have an effect on price? Is it a long-term thing? Bitcoin halving, what happens? I think it's not priced in. Very nicely said, I agree. All right, we'll have to see. Catherine, Bill Gates famously said, we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. What does the blockchain space look like in 10 years time? In 10 years time, I hope it is more attention to detail and has a higher level of integrity. Can't argue with that, all right. Well, Catherine, uh, sci-fi author William Gibson said, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. Can you think of an example of the future being here right now, but most people just aren't really aware of it? Uh, yes, 13 to 18 are already accepting that global celebrities, call it, are available in the palm of their hand. I think that there are more youthful folks that have quote-unquote pen pal networks that branching up beyond borders, whereas there's a very uh, older generation that is not even aware that they can communicate daily with people from around the world. So that to me is the future, that we will no longer see borders for sake of having jobs that cross them, friends that live on other sides of the world, uh, ways of payment that transcend all borders. So borderless future. Yeah, nice. So, and I think once you, if you can spend time with your friends in a sort of, uh, you know, a digital metaverse with a, a, a universal digital currency, borders don't, they don't matter so much, do they? They don't matter. Yeah. I have friends of mine in Hong Kong that tell me, you know, oh, you should buy this thing. And I'm like, ah, gonna need some Hong Kong dollars for that. So it would be nice if we could all just uh, transact in the ways that we need to. It's coming. It's happening. Catherine, let's zoom out. What is the long-term future for the human race? Do you see dystopia or utopia? Oh, I see uh, majority percentages moving towards women. <laughs> We're already 51% of the world, so be careful. 
Kind of like robots. People don't realize this, but you gotta treat us nicely or else we'll remember. <laughs> Hey, it was really it was really sad to see a not another woman candidate be able to make it through. Oh, I'll admit. Yeah. I think it'd be a different world if if yeah the woman if if woman did a fifty one percent attack on the global population. And, and be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a women's group actually called fifty one P for that reason because there's fifty one percent of women in the world and we could also attack, but. Again, treat us nicely, you know, give us opportunities, mentor us, help us get up into areas that you may think are, you know, intimidating and we'll, uh, we'll pay it forward. Sounds good to me. All right, Catherine, finally, what is your favorite science fiction book, film, show or universe? Uh, oof. I'm a diehard Star Wars fan, so I am... Um, made our entire office have to endure my baby yoda obsession and my darth vader costume that comes out every year at least for two holidays may the 4th and halloween so i'm, I'm gonna have to say you know put me in put me in the lucas uh, arena for star wars nice yeah the mandalorian was good wasn't it god it's so good i can't wait for the next season to come out i i really have conspiracy theories on that but i think they've had to de derail the entire plot because baby yoda just captured so many people's attention they just said all right we're gonna do this filler season and then the real the real plot will pick up and the the cowboy uh western that we are expecting will come through with the mandalorian but I do take notes from many of these stories for sake that I feel we're doing a very similar thing here in crypto. So just don't wear masks. Absolutely. Or have <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, it's been a lot of fun to talk to you today, Catherine. Hey, take us out. The microphone is yours. Tell us anything else we need to know about what's coming up for Binance US, where people can go to find out more, where they can find you on your various platforms. The microphone is yours. Take us out. My two cents is be in charge of the future that's being built. Download the app. Talk to us on Twitter at Binance America or Crypto Coley. Give us your feedback. Build this the way that you would like it to be built and we will unleash the future of freedom of money for everyone. So uh, find it out. We've got our one click buy sell on the website. We've got our uh, various ways of trading. You've got great information on understanding how to do so through Binance Academy. Uh, check it all out. If you can't figure it out, message me on Twitter. If you can't figure out Twitter, uh, check in on our website, leave a ticket for our customer support. We'll be happy to help you. Uh, we're all right here and humans to humans. Let's build the world that we can. Oh, that was wonderfully said, Catherine. I love it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And boom, and we are done. Thank you to Catherine Coley. Thank you to Binance US. There are links in the show notes to Binance, to Catherine on Twitter, to Brave New Coin, to Brave New Coin on Twitter, and even to myself on Twitter. Links also in the show notes to Nexo. The Crypto Conversation is proudly sponsored by DeFi leaders Nexo. So if you want to borrow instantly in 45 different fiat currencies using your digital assets as collateral, or if you want to earn interest on your digital assets, Nexo are the place to be. As I say, links in the show notes. Thank you to Nexo. If you did enjoy the show, please do make sure you subscribe to The Crypto Conversation in whatever podcast app you are using. Also, of course, please do give us a five-star rating in Apple iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. Stay safe out there, folks. Look out for the virus. The virus is spreading. Make sure you wash your hands. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave and you Coin. Boom. Shake, shake the room.